Hickok 45 here. You all have been requesting the EMP from Springfield for quite a while now, and I have been negligent. I have been ignoring you. Why have I done that? Well, now we have it here at the compound, and I'm going to shoot it. <laughs> yes, the EMP from Springfield finally got my hands on one and let's reload it. Let's put a couple on that target. The two liter target. See where to hold. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think the sights are pretty much on. If I can hit anything with it, we'll put that target in the box for the e-gunner auction. Okay, so it'll be in the box with the firearm. Let's try, oh look, someone put a paint can on top of a two liter. <laughs> it went in the <laughs> burn barrel. I hope you caught that. Uh, I've been working on that all week. <laughs> That's a first. Let's go bowling. Yeah. Hey, another bowling pin. Bop. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, shooting is fun. You never know what is going to happen. Oh, man. That was funny. That was funny. So this is the Springfield EMP. And I see why you guys uh, have and gals have been asking about it. Because it's a pretty cool little pistol. Uh, it was designed to be a 9mm, 1911. So it's not a scaled down... 45 uh, ACP or anything. It is designed to, to be exactly what it is. And we print fire the hollow points because you know, sometimes I forget. I'll load them while you're taking a look at the, at the pistol. I fired, uh, as of now, I guess it's close to 200 rounds. I put some hydro shocks in one of these and uh, I've not had a bobble, okay? It has, uh, it, it has been flawless. So we'll see if uh, we can keep that up. Uh, I understand the early ones, yeah, they came out about 2007, uh, at least I read online, and of course anything you read online is true, right, that uh, there were some reliability issues. Apparently they have uh, improved on that. Well, I won't load it until I get the others loaded. I'll put some, uh, I've got hydroshocks in that. Let's put some of these HST in this magazine. They hold nine rounds. The mags do, and you get three mags with it, which is kind of nice. It's not cheap. These things uh, uh, retail around $1,150, $1,200. So it's not an inexpensive uh, pistol. I guess, uh, yeah, let's load two. What the heck? So we got three magazines of hollow points and uh, two magazines full of 147 grain HST, which is uh, one of my preferred carry arounds. Uh, before we got help from federal okay so and i still carry that let's try the hydro shocks first okay put these in my mag pouch there we go by the way that holster i'll get questions about it that's uh stealth gear usa they're making outside the waistband holsters now and uh i've gotten where i'm wearing an outside the waistband holster more than an inside the waistband uh lately uh all right hydro shocks Let's shock something. Oh, I see a 12 ouncer hiding behind that cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put a hydro shock on the cowboy. Right. Now, let's give him uh, an HST. That was it. 147 grain. Okay. Took care of the pot in that 12 ouncer. And you know what? Since we have a HST here, let's just uh, send one out to the gong. They're in that general direction. All right. Uh, 
Uh, look at it shake or swing. Nice, nice. I'm gonna try to roll a pig with one of these. Got him. Oh, there's a 12 ouncer I missed. Wow. Okay. So all the hollow points uh, went through successfully. And that's very important. Unless you're living in New Jersey, right? Uh, in New Jersey, I think you're not allowed to have hollow points. Crazy, because they are safer for uh, self-defense. But, you know, people who hate guns, hate freedom, you can't tell them anything. Uh, they're not into common sense. And so that's kind of the stuff you get in, in New Jersey, right? You folks that live there, I'm sorry, you uh, shooters. It's, uh, you just have to do the best you can, don't you? Uh, so... Anyway, so we'll go to, let's go to 140 or 124 grain ammo. And uh, as I'm loading, again, this is a pretty cool little gun. If you're interested in, I guess where this gun fits is if you're, you like 1911s and you, you would rather carry a, uh, a 1911 for your carry gun. So, I mean, I guess you wouldn't have to carry it, but for a defensive pistol, you like a 1911, but you would like a small one. And you would like a 9mm. There's lots of good ammo for the 9mm now. <laughs> Got some of it on the table, don't I? And that's kind of where it fits. Uh, it's not very heavy. It's 27 ounces, which is, what, about 5 ounces heavier than a Glock 26. Holds about the same amount of ammo. You've got 9 plus 1 in, in this pistol. And you got 10 plus one, the Glock 26. This is a little heavier, but not a lot. You don't really notice that difference uh, in, on, in a belt holster. Now, pocket guns, you really notice a, a couple of ounces difference, okay? Because uh, I know I talk about weight a lot and make a big deal out of it. Once you get into a good uh, belt holster, yeah, an ounce or two doesn't make that, that much difference. Uh, you notice by the end of the day, maybe, if there's a significant difference. But when you just pick this up, you don't get the feeling it's a big old heavy gun. Uh, but it's, it's a 1911. It's got an alloy frame. It's got a uh, forged aluminum alloy frame. It's black anodized. And you've got a uh, forged stainless slide which you, with a satin finish there, as you can see. You've got tritium sights on it. Uh, you've got uh, Novak style sights. Uh, it's, it's a nice little package. Uh, for a 1911 because it's got all those things that that make them more comfortable to shoot you know your nice beaver tail grip safety uh, it's got ambi uh, thumb safety which I don't really care for but it's got uh, it's got that uh, nice trigger it's I think they advertise it as being around five pounds or something it feels lighter to me than that so pretty nice trigger nice brake uh, skeletonized trigger and hammer you know, you've got all that, that stuff. I guess I ought to take it apart for you, you think? Well, let's do it. Now, I can, I can be known to, I've taken it apart several times because I've been shooting it probably four different times. Generally, I don't. The last time I had it apart, for some reason, I was struggling a little bit. And of course, you know, I'm a little klutzy. Get this back in the groove there. It's loosening up a little bit, maybe. It always helps. So I had to wait till it got dirty, didn't I? And you, you got a uh, double spring, of course, and uh, you just have a three-inch barrel, so that presents some challenges. You got this little bushing here at the end. It's a full-length guide rod, which I generally don't like as well as the standard. And there you go. You got a thick barrel, big old bull barrel. So that does away with the uh, the bushing, the classic 1911 bushing. All right, and then uh, slip it back in there, right back together. Put the bushing back in the front and the spring and guide rod. This is what I was fumbling for. There we go. Okay. Slide back on the rail. The machining and everything looks really nice on this pistol. Uh, seems like a, uh, you know, like it's, it's a quality gun. Okay. 
Seems like a quality pistol. Let me put that back in. The main aspect of it that I would interpret as quality is the fact that it has not malfunctioned yet. All right, that is very important. Okay, the most important uh, thing, more so than anything. You know, reliability is number one, and uh, the match grade barrel is nice, I guess, but it's got to function. Okay, because you know what a little pistol like this is for? It's not shooting gongs at 80 yards or pigs. It's for up close and dirty, and you want it to work, all right? So let's shoot it some more. I'm impressed. No malfunction. I'm going to jinx it. No malfunctions. No malfunctions. Okay. <laughs> let's put him back in the holster and draw him out. Okay. Cover him up. Pretend he's not there. And, uh, oh, you know what? We keep neglecting the other cowboy, don't we? He really does feel neglected, no doubt about it. Reload. Yeah, got a mosquito up on the microphone. <laughs> oh, a tin can looking at me there. Let's put some holes in the bottom of him. Yeah, <laughs> three of them. Oh, we have a couple of uh, 12 ounces down there. Yeah. Cool. Propane. <laughs> ah, cinder block. Missed it, I guess. All right. Sent a few over it there, I think. Uh, I don't know if I need to shoot a lot more. I might shoot a couple more. But uh, what have I uh, not told you about it? It's got the VZ grips on it. Uh, you know, hex uh, screws to hold that in. So those are nice. And again, this was designed to be a, a 9 millimeter. It's a little thinner. You don't, you know, you got the thinner grips. It, uh, it, it's not quite as long as a full length 1911. Uh, so it, it, but still with the 9 millimeter, it holds uh, 9 rounds. So. That's pretty nice capacity, nine plus one. Uh, like I said, your ambi uh, safety on this thing. And they've been making these, I think since 2007, and uh, might have had a little uh, you know, sketchy beginning from what I've read. Don't know, I never have owned one. But I did read that in recent years from the reviews and uh, people I saw making comments on them that they, they had uh, worked out whatever problems the early ones had. So again, this is one firearm. And with this one firearm, specific firearm, we've not had the first bobble. And I keep trying to jinx it by saying that, doing it over and over, because, you know, that's what happens. You know, Murphy finds his way into your environment if you start uh, <laughs> bragging about not having any trouble. And, uh, I, and that just always impresses the heck out of me with a semi-automatic of any kind, whether it's a 22 long rifle or a little pistol like this, if it just functions reliably, you know. Uh, it's much easier for me to accept any other negatives. Speaking of which, what would be the negatives in this firearm? Well, uh, for what it is, I, you know, if this is what you're looking for, this configuration, I'm not sure I've encountered any real negatives. Uh, the front sight doesn't jump out at me. Uh, and I think those are, yeah, Trigicon. Those look like the same sights uh, the front sight that was on my Cobra carry and I had them replace the the front sight doesn't show up very clearly uh, So it, it meets now. I may have gotten some powder residue on it, but it's never been very bright And I'm talking about in daylight uh, You've heard me complain about night sights before that might be wonderful when it's dark But when it's not dark You can't find them. Okay. I like sights. I can see in the daytime and in the nighttime, preferably at least in the daytime very clearly. So I would switch out the front side if it were me. Uh, and I, you know, the, the farm feels fine to me. I, I don't uh, have a problem with uh, the feel of it, the trigger I like. 
Uh, it shoots pretty well. I have not. I was. I have taken a lot of shots at the red plate, and I have uh, had a little trouble hitting the red plate. So it's not going to be a long-range tack driver for me. Uh, I was pleased to hit a pig, but uh, I have struggled a little bit in terms of maybe you know on some occasions with some pistols, I can hammer even even the little red plate over there, but uh, I haven't been able to do that with this one. And I'll take a couple of shots and show you. Okay. You might not believe it, see, when I tell you about uh, my misses, right? So I'm kind of the opposite of the guy that brags about the fish he got away. I, uh, I brag about the misses. So uh, let's see if I can do that live on camera so you'll believe me. All right. I'll try to hit the red plate. Can't seem to figure out where to hold exactly, or maybe I'm flinching a little bit. I don't know. Now it looks like it's turned a little bit, make it smaller for me. Maybe it's that front sight. I don't see it too clearly. Well, I may have popped it once or twice there. Got close to it on a couple others, I think. So let's, uh, again, safety on. Here's what the thing is for. It's not for long range. It's uh, for taking care of business. More ammo in it. So that's what it uh, is designed for. It's a defensive pistol, and uh, and one like this that doesn't malfunction is what you want. If this is a configuration you want, uh, again, the front sight's the negative. Uh, for for many of you, the fact that it's a 1911 might be a negative, and you know, maybe for me, for a carry pistol, I choose not to carry uh, generally a pistol that has a thumb safety on it uh, for defense. I'm okay with it. I carried a 1911, uh, you know, for a good while off and on back in yesteryear. So I can train myself to do that. It just becomes natural. I competed with one, so it's it's kind of natural to wipe that safety off. And that's something I didn't show you too. Maybe that's a negative. I like one of these too uh, when I when I because uh, I used to in competition anyway, and it's sort of is a bit of a habit. Uh, when when it's cocked and of course it's empty it doesn't matter from a point down range but safety on so if you shoot with your thumb up there you wipe the safety down and pull it what well, did that time i noticed that uh, it doesn't engage the safety for me all now it's doing it now but uh now it's not it it it's not i got to get my thumb off that thumb safety to guarantee that this will be engaged for the trigger to pull now that's my large hand so if you have a large hand uh, be aware some pistols are better at that than others so just be aware of that okay but uh so it's kind of come comes down to whether or not you want uh, a 1911 it's got all the stuff that uh you really want in the 1911 for a carry gun i think except no front checkering It'd be nice if it had some front strap uh, checkering of some sort you get a little bit better grasp on it but that i think is about all that's really missing uh if you wanted a small 1911 uh, for carry you know you've got the good feel the, the sights uh you know night sights you know just a quality little piece of hardware seems to me so the emp you have requested a lot of you have and so i've been i've enjoyed shooting it the last few days and i see why uh, many of you own them and or, or are planning to buy them and uh as far as my impressions of it it's it's uh it's a worthy worthy pistol uh, it certainly is. Uh, it goes bang every time you pull the trigger with a variety of, of weights of ammo and a couple of different hollow points and all three magazines that came with it. It, uh, it wants to keep on functioning, so can't hate that. Springfield EMP, pretty neat little, little pistol. Wasn't all that aware of it. Had never even held one, I guess. Now I have. Life is good.
<laughs> oh, well, since I'm still here, let me take this moment to thank uh, SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute, for their support of the channel. Uh, we appreciate you know their help. Uh, SDI is a place where you can get certified in uh, gunsmithing. You can even get an associate's degree in firearms technology and work in various areas of the firearms field. Might be appealing to you. They work a lot with veterans, and uh, it's just a pretty cool place. So check out the link uh, SDI.edu. Uh, the link is in. Uh, the description of most videos, almost all videos for the last six months or more. So, uh, so check that out. Also, while I have you, since I'm still here, uh, be sure to to check the links in all the descriptions because you know we're on full 30 now. Also, with all the videos, so there's a link in the in the descriptions to full 30, as well as of course our sponsors, uh, SDI, Bud's Gun Shop, dot com, uh, Federal Premium. So, all the good information is there, as well as uh, keep in mind that on Hickok 45 and Sun, we have uh, quite a few videos over there. John's doing the, the Gun Culture Radio Show over there. Check it out if you haven't done that yet. Our Facebook page, uh, the Hickok 45 Facebook, uh, Hickok 45 and Sun Facebook page. That's where we try to stay in touch with you and uh, give you a little extra information. Even post pictures and uh, a little video occasionally, just just whatever. Uh, mainly just a way to keep up with you all and provide some more information. You know, we're not really Facebookers, but it's a it's a pretty good system for that. Even though most of us are not in love with Facebook, right? <laughs> so check all that out, and you really had better check it out because I might just have to come to your house and have a chat with you if you don't. And I expect to have coffee and donuts ready when I get there. Right.